Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to share with you my experience of building and flying the Catalyst Machine Works Raging Droner 5R Racing Quadcopter. Recently I reviewed this frame, so if you're looking for more information on how to assemble it and you want to learn more about its specifications, you can check out my review over here. The components that I chose to use are first of all the T-Motor F60 Pro 3 2500 kV motors, the Dalprop T5249C propellers, the Spedex GS45A 4-in-1 ESC and their F4 flight controller, the Rush FV Ultimate VTX, a Foxeer Lollipop V2 antenna, a Crossfire Nano Receiver, and finally the Foxeer Falco Micro FV camera. Building the quadcopter wasn't very complicated, but you should note that you don't have a lot of room in the center to fit your stack, so I recommend to use the shortest spacers that you can. In addition, you're not going to have any extra space on the back of your stack, so I recommend to place your receiver on the front of the quadcopter next to the FAV camera. And by the way, when I reviewed the frame, I accidentally placed the back arms on the bottom plate and the spacer above them, and it should be the other way around, as the back arms should be raised above the front ones. In case you will need to change the 4-in-1 ESC, flight controller or VTX, you won't have any other choice but disassembling the frame, which is not a very convenient task. However, if you just need to replace a motor or do a quick fix on the flight controller, you can still access them from the sides of the frame, so this is a pretty nice feature. I also like the way that the FAV antenna is mounted on the back of the quadcopter, as it will have plenty of protection, and also you can easily change it, for example, for a stubby antenna, if you want to shave off a couple of grams. I do think, however, that it could have been better if the connector was just a little bit raised to the top of the quadcopter, as I found it very hard to fit the back of the connector on top of the stack, and I had to bend it. The total weight of my build is 375.7 grams without the GoPro 7 camera and 491.3 grams including it. So we are looking at a pretty heavy setup and when flying it with a 1300 mAh 4S LiPo battery I could only get about a minute and a half of flight time so I recommend to opt in for a bigger 1800 mAh 4S LiPo battery which will get you just over 2 minutes of flight time. The next thing that I'm going to do is to share the build video and then the flight footage with and without the GoPro 7 camera. I can tell you that when the GoPro 7 black camera was mounted on the quadcopter, I was first of all very careful not to crash the quadcopter, even though this mount provides plenty of protection. In addition, the quadcopter felt pretty heavy and when I didn't use the camera, the quadcopter felt very agile and it probably would be much more agile when removing the mount. So what I'm going to do is replace the GoPro 7 mount with the GoPro Session 5 mount, which is lighter, and of course the GoPro Session 5 or the Runcom 3 cameras are much less expensive than the GoPro 7 black camera. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions about this quadcopter or any of the parts that I used, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.